Okay, so now we're going to look at hyperbola that's not centered at the origin. We're looking at hyperbola centered at HK. Okay, so in the notes, again, I have uh, hyperbolas drawn centered at HK that open up and open down. There's a list of formulas, particularly the ones that we're going to look at are the ones for the asymptotes. For the foci and the vertices, we are going to get those off the graph as usual. However, asymptotes, there's special formulas that are actually in those notes. So you want to be familiar with that because we're going to be using that formula here. So you should, again, take a look at those before you watch the rest of this video. It might make more sense if you have the kind of the background or the formulas itself that go along with it. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, work through this problem. Now it's already written in the proper form. I've got a quantity squared and I have a quantity squared here. And what this tells me is that since the x comes first, this tells me that the hyperbola is going to open up to the left and to the right. So again, we do that the same way. If the uh, x comes first, it opens up uh, sideways. Now, what you might be noticing is, well, wouldn't it open up and down because a larger number is underneath the y? No, that's for ellipses. Okay, we don't have an ellipse here. We have hyperbolas. Hyperbolas, it's different. Okay, so it has nothing to do with a, if a or b is larger. It has to do with which variable actually comes first. So if x comes first, that's all you have to, work to, to know. That, uh, that's all you have to realize here to know that it opens up sideways. So in this case, the a is not going to be the larger number. a is always physically what comes first in the positive fraction, the one that comes in front of the minus sign. That's the one you want to look at. So in this case, my a is going to be 1 and my b is going to be 2. So that's why, again, I mentioned earlier, transverse and conjugate are not major and minor because sometimes the a might actually be larger, like in this example here. So this so happens that the a is smaller this time. Now the formula for c, we're still going to do the same thing. It's still a squared plus b squared. So we have 1 squared plus 2 squared. So c is going to be uh, the square root of 5. Okay, so square root of 5 is about uh, 2.24, somewhere around there is what the value for square root of 5 is. So that's the square root of 1 squared uh, plus 2 squared, you get that. Now that we have this piece of information, we have A, B, and C, we can answer uh, some of these questions here. Now center, we can get that directly off of the formula. It's opposite sign of this and opposite sign of that. So we're going to get 3 and negative 1, that's going to be your center. Next. Uh, we're going to jump down and do these. Now, as I mentioned before, the asymptotes, there's a formula that is in your notes for a hyperbola that opens up sideways. Let me go ahead and write it out for you. y minus k equals plus or minus b over a. That's the same slope as if it would be centered at the origin. So again, if it opens up sideways, you always have b over a, and you have x minus h. This is given in point slope form. So this is the actual formula from the notes that you're going to use in order to do the asymptotes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put in our hk. We already have h and k here from our center that we did earlier. So I have y minus negative 1, that's y plus 1, is going to equal plus or minus b over a. We have that already. 2 over 1. And then x minus h, that's going to be x minus 3. So when I put this in here, then I have y plus 1 equals plus or minus 2 times x minus 3. Now, if you're doing this online, it may ask you for the, the, uh, the equation solve for y. In that case, what you'd have to do is you have to do one equation of y plus 1 equals positive 2 times x minus 3. Then you would do y plus 1 equals uh, negative 2 times x minus 3. And you would solve for y for each of those individually. Now, on my test, you don't have to worry about doing that. On a test, it's actually OK to leave it in this format. Uh, just like this. So we're going to leave it in the point slope form. Okay. Now we're going to do eccentricity. Eccentricity is uh, always c over a. So we have square root of 5 over 1. So square root of 5 or again that's going to be the 2.24 here again. So 2.24 is a larger number than we've had previously which means that we should expect that this is going to be a fairly wide uh, hyperbola when we uh, draw it. Transverse 2 times a. 2 times 1 is 2. Conjugate, 2 times b, 2 times 2 uh, is going to be 4. So we have, again, the conjugate is the one that's larger this time because the b uh, was larger. We've done all this. Now we're ready to do the vertices and the foci. 
All right, so we're going to do that right here. The first thing you want to do is you want to plot the center. The center is 3, negative 1. That's right here. We know that it opens up sideways because we have the x that came first. You're going to go to the left and the right with the a. You have to go left and right because that's the direction it's opening up. A always goes in the direction uh, that it's opening up. So we got to go left and right with a. A is 1. So we're going to go to the left 1, make a dot. Go to the right 1, make a dot. These dots we've created right here, those are your vertices. So I'm going to read those off the graph. So I'm not using any formulas at all. I'm actually doing everything off of the graph itself. Let's go ahead and put those in for vertices. You have uh, positive 2 and negative 1. That's this coordinate. And then we have 4 comma negative 1 is this coordinate. So now we got both of those. All right, so now we have that. The B, we're going to go up and down from this point here. So from the center, we're going to go up 2 and we're going to go down 2. This forms the top and bottoms of your box. So now we're gonna, we have a left-hand side box and we have a right-hand side of the box there. We have a dot that goes on top and we have one that goes in the bottom like that. We're gonna connect the corners, connect the diagonals. And when we connect the diagonals, that's gonna create our asymptotes. That's basically these lines that we just came up with here using the formula earlier. That's what we have. So now this is gonna open up to the left and the right and we have these two dots that it's actually gonna go through. So it follows this this one right here, this, this uh, asymptote, it'll hit that dot, come down and follow that one. This one will do the same thing, hit the dot and come down uh, like that. Opens up to the left and to the right. All right, the last thing we have to do now is foci. Foci was 2.24. You're going to measure it from this point right here. That's your center. You're going to go 2.24 out here. And then 2.24, that's 1, 2, and 2.4 will be about... 2.24s are out there. Again, the foci always goes inside of the curve when you're drawing these. Now we have to just list the coordinates for that. Well, I know the y coordinate is going to be negative 1 for sure because all these are along the same, the same line. All of them have a y coordinate of negative 1. Now for the x coordinate, what did I do? I took the x coordinate of the center, which was 3 normally, and from the 3, I added square root of 5 this way and I subtracted square root of 5 that way. So now I just have to represent that as a number. Okay, well that means I'm taking 3 and I'm adding and subtracting square root of 5, but the y value is still fixed at negative 1. That's exactly how that is translated. The 3 is, because, is from the h of your center. That's where the 3 comes from. And then I added square root of 5, subtracted square root of 5 there on that side. So that's where I get that one from. So this is going to be your completed graph. We've answered all of our questions.